Hey there, everyone. It's Blair here at Time Trades. Thanks for joining me this weekend. It is Sunday, July 31st, and this is your weekly video. Today, we are going to be doing a bit of an autopsy on the uh, in incorrect, unsuccessful forecast that was made over the last few weeks and uh, the discovery that actually is emerging from that uh, from that incorrect forecast. So um, there's definitely some uh, lemonade to be made here. So first we'll talk about the forecast, the basis of it, and um, uh, then I'll go into what I discovered. So the forecast was really based on uh, the cues that you can see here and uh, the cycle equivalents of the yellow boxes. I've been talking about this for a few weeks here. And these are based on the small pivot and medium pivot cycles. These are astronomical cycles uh, and also the equivalents of the lunar cycles here. So I was pretty optimistic up until about, you know, um, up until about uh, the 27th, Wednesday last week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is when everything fell apart. Uh, Tuesday, um, Monday, Tuesday looked good. We had those two red days right in the middle of the yellow box. Um, and uh, I was confident that things would work out. Then there uh, was a big turnaround on Fed Day. I should know better than to fade these stage managed events. And uh, sure enough, there was a big gamma squeeze to the upside. And here we are about uh, 20 points higher going up from 294 to 315. Um, so does this mean this technique is wrong and should never be used? I don't think so. I believe this technique is useful. But in the follow-up review, um, I believe I found something that is uh, stronger and really took, uh, took control of the situation. So I'll share that with you right now. Uh, if we go to the time trade script in trading view and turn on GAN waves, we're going to be spending some time on GAN waves today. This is really like the GAN waves episode. So... Um, GAN waves cycle from uh, a low at the blue line to a high on the yellow line, crosses zero at the green line, okay? So just imagine a sine wave in your head that does that, okay? And um, the way GAN used to trade these, these are, these are discoveries from Tunnels Through the Air and deciphering that book of riddles, um, the way GAN would tend to trade these is he would buy um, on the blue line and sell on the yellow line. That's kind of the standard playbook for GAN waves, okay? So if we go back to the all-time high that you know was traced out starting from basically November to early January, we can see here um, as we go up, we start with a low GAN wave on October 12th. I'm gonna zoom in here so it's a little bit less busy, a little bit easier to read. Let's do that, okay? So we're back here on October 12th, 2021. That was a low. Uh, that is per the standard GAN wave playbook. Uh, and then price goes up into the yellow GAN wave on October 26th. And then price does something interesting. Instead of going down into the next blue, it keeps going up into the next blue. So this indicates a bit of an inversion going on. And, and, and it's actually, uh, it actually foreshadows the top that's to come. Okay. Uh, and then you can see the cycle starts to break down as um, price goes down a little bit and makes a standard top as per usual at uh, yellow. So we've got yellow higher than the previous yellow, um, and we've got blue higher than previous blue. So um, that is conventional. Uh, and then we get blue lower than yellow. Okay, that's normal. But then we get yellow at about the same price as blue. Again, this is foreshadowing a breakdown in price. Okay, it's because yellow is normally higher than the prior yellow. In this case, we have yellow lower than the prior yellow, right? Um, and then we get blue 
higher than the previous blue. Again, that is non-standard, that's unconventional. So let's keep going here. Now we start to see the inversion is really in full effect with um, the yellow GAN wave lower than the previous blue. And that's this is making it clear that the trend change is really starting to get traction, okay? And then we, we come down here to January 31st, we get a low right on the blue, that's per normal, little bit of a bounce up into the next yellow, okay? But it's weak, it's not very strong, and we end up going down some more. And notice how close the GAN waves are to the actual lows in price, right? So this is within one day of a low in price. This blue line here on February 28th is within two days of the low in price. And now we start to see another breakdown in the standard pattern that indicates price may be, may be going up. Instead of uh, yellow being a uh, slightly higher than blue, it's actually lower than blue. That indicates an inversion in the GAN wave pattern, okay? And we come down here into this nice little wedge supported by a white magic level and get a nice boost up into uh, the next blue uh, GAN wave here on March 25th. After a little top, we the yellow is right at the same price. The, the yellow GAN wave on April 8th is right at the same price as blue, okay? So again, non-standard behavior. Standard behavior is when yellow is higher than blue, okay? Um, so then the downtrend resumes as the moon moves into its the negative half of its cycle, starting with Leo, uh, and we see blue less than yellow, so we can uh, confidently forecast a continued decline. We see yellow less than blue, so this indicates significant weakness as it makes its way down through this white magic level. And uh, then the decline... Um, uh, extends to the next blue level here on March 18th. Um, and But now we're starting to see some conventional behavior because the next yellow is higher than blue. Over here, yellow was lower than blue, indicating uh, uh, downside extension. Now we're starting to see some more normal behavior with yellow higher than blue. So uh, we've got one more cycle here starting with this yellow on June 1st, comes down into blue, and uh, that's on June 15th, and that's within one day of the recent low, okay, that was on June 16th, okay? So um, this is, again, evidence of more conventional behavior starting to assert itself, which is blue, let, blue prices are lower than uh, yellow or yellow higher than blue. So the next yellow cycle goes up, into June 29th, blue cycle is higher than the prior blue. It's more or less the same as the prior yellow. And then we get the boost up into the next yellow. So you see how that works? Yeah, um, that is really the cycle that's in control here. So based on this, we can go back to our pyramid that we use to um, help uh, guide our decision making here. And we're going to update this. We're going to we're gonna move um, the, the GAN waves up. We're gonna promote them in importance further up the pyramid. So they're at the top there because basically what we've just seen is uh, proof that GAN waves override the medium pivot and the small pivot cycle, okay? So uh, that's one way that we're learning from uh, what we've seen in the markets recently. Okay, so let's go back to trading view, and I want to do another example of this, this time with natural gas. Um, so if you think this is all just wired only for uh, the NASDAQ and the Qs, uh, that is not the case. So um, I wanted to test this out. I've also been trading natural gas a little bit, and uh, this is how it works out. So we're looking at natural gas futures. Uh, this is a bit more of a detailed worked example here, okay? So starting back in on March 21st, we get that bullish divergence as 
um, price crosses the level of the prior yellow, okay? So remember, yellows typically mark a peak in the GAN wave cycle. Um, so when you get price exceeding the prior yellow, that's definitely a bullish divergence. And the way you read these notes is these notes that are on the chart here are directly below the bar, okay? So these are directly below the bar that it refers to. There's no angled lines. Um, so we get this bullish divergence, okay? And instead of going down into a blue, we're going up into a blue. And now we've got the, the a couple of positive cycles aligned here. We've got the lunar cycle with uh, uh, Aquarius to Leo. Uh, that is supportive. And we've got the GAN wave cycle from blue to yellow. That is supportive. And of course, price blasts off up into the next uh, magic level here, right? So... Um, this is a great place to take profits right on this yellow GAN wave, just uh, just at this uh, white magic level. Uh, and uh, if if you entered at this bullish divergence, that's like 490, and we're all the way up here at um, uh, 680, 690, right? So uh, that's a, that's a huge run for natural gas. Okay. Um, so as of here, you're you're out, you've taken profits, um, and you're waiting for this next blue cycle to go. You patiently see price keep going up, but you're not worried because you know that price is going to um, uh, make a little correction coming into the blue line, and it does into the blue GAN wave. So there's the bottom of the GAN wave. Uh, and again, it aligns with the positive lunar cycle in Aquarius here. So we get some wicks down and days down below this white magic level. This is a chance to reload long and you can take advantage of this next uh, two week wave up into the next yellow magic level here on May 6. Okay. So again, you've uh, you're, you're banking here from 660 all the way up to nine. And um, because natural gas is so volatile, you, you definitely want to take profits again uh, when, uh, and this is not a buy and hold commodity. Okay. So you sell here, you take your profits here. Um, and, uh, again, you've got another opportunity here to reload long, um, except, uh, this time it's not as strong as the prior two cycles. Okay. So you're starting to see a loss of momentum, even though the blue to yellow GAN wave is in place, the Aquarius to Leo lunar cycle is in place. Um, so it's uh, not as profitable as the last time. Still a profitable trade, though, which is good. Um, so you, you'll you want to um, uh, take profits here on June 2nd. Um, you start to see an obvious loss of momentum, the moon going into Leo, which is the negative part of its cycle. Price is starting to wick um, below the one by one on the GAN, on the GAN, uh, uh, the GAN fan, so I'll turn that on. So I've got a GAN fan on now. So you can see how this blue line here is the one by one, and this is anchored way back at the start of this uh, price run. And now we've got confirmation of a downtrend with this blue price less than the prior blue price over here. Okay, so we're comparing um, blue with prior blue. Uh, price is going down, confirmation of a downtrend, not even a uh, positive lunar cycle can help it. The, the, GAN wave, um, uh, the, the, the GAN wave has inverted. So instead of yellows being tops, they're bottoms now. And we see a massive dump on this yellow GAN wave day, which is conventionally a top. But in this case, it was um, basically a bottom because of the inversion that it happened, all right? Um, and now we, we see uh, the moon starting the negative part of its cycle. Um, price starts to recover here, and um, it's hard to see the blue line, but there is a blue line here. So on July 13th, we've got a blue GAN wave, okay? So this gives us another chance to compare with the prior GAN wave cycle lines. And in this case, we've got um, uh, a bullish divergence because the price on the blue GAN wave day 
um, is uh, matching or uh, it's actually looks like it's slightly lower than the uh, yellow, uh, previous yellow GAN wave day, but it's very, very close. And so this is a sign of strength in natural gas. So what we could do is because we're at the bottom of the GAN wave cycle here, we could uh, either enter long here, or we could wait for it to retake this white magic level and enter here and ride it up into the next peak of the GAN wave cycle. And right now we've completed the yellow GAN wave cycle. We've switched back to conventional, um, we've switched back to conventional behavior in the GAN wave, yellows being highs, blues being lows. And so now it looks like the playbook is to wait for a decline into the next blue GAN wave line, which is coming up on uh, August the 10th. So that's a very good ex worked example of how to integrate GAN waves into uh, a symbol like natural gas. And you can do your own work offline using the time trades indicator uh, and trading view with the symbols that you like to trade. Okay, so with that, let's go and take a look at uh, time trades, and we want to do our usual symbol review here. Okay, so let's look at the cues. Um, uh, oh, before I do that, I almost forgot, we've got a massive update to share with you. So let's go to Keynote. Okay, so we just um, updated this slide here on our framework for decision making. We promoted GAN waves up the pyramid. But uh, I also want to talk with you about some of the machine learning additions that we made. Okay, so the machine learning additions contribute to the daily probabilities. Okay, so this is uh, the least important part of the overall framework, but it's still part of the framework. And I'm always working to make these more accurate. Okay, we added a lot of uh, Vedic astrology points here specifically the nakshatra that the nine Vedic planets are in. We also added the Lord status of when a planet is in the sign that it is a Lord for. Uh, also, Pada changes. A uh, Pada is one quarter of a nakshatra. Uh, and also when a planet is in exaltation and debilitation. So all of these additions have been tested and confirmed to improve accuracy of the machine learning. We also added uh, subcycles um, for the teal to teal uh, cheat code cycle. So uh, the cheat code has teal lines that indicate the midpoint of the cheat code cycle. And uh, internally, if you break those down into subcycles, then that also helps with accuracy. We added static GAN dates as well. And based on the learnings and observations from the price action last week, we saw a lot of activity right when uh, Jupiter went uh, from direct to station as it prepares to go, re go retrograde. So what we did is we um, broadened the days that that uh, activity is active in, in our data set. So uh, a direct to station transition used to be one day and it's now four days. <laughs> okay, so those are the machine learning additions and those are all live now on the timetrades.com website. So let's go and take a look at uh, what they mean and, and um, we can do a quick summary here of a few of the common symbols that we look at. Now we've got these teal lines here. This is the middle of the teal line cheat code cycle I was talking about. This is the cues we're looking at and we can see this cluster of pivot lows. Um, we don't see much in terms of upward activity here, but we see some low probabilities of uh, downward activity on the cues. So it looks like we're in for a correction um, and that would also make sense given where we are in the lunar cycle. Uh, with the moon entering Virgo starting on Monday. So it looks like the, the next week or so, 
Um, we, we will be starting a correction with a, uh, a pretty wide range of potential pivot low days here between August 9th and August 18th, okay? So something to be aware of. Um, and that would also make sense given the uh, proximity to the white magic level here at 322. We got, got up pretty close to that. Um, who knows, we may come closer to that. I don't know, but um, uh, it looks like the, the bias is going to be on the downside for the queues in the short term. So let's take a quick look at spiders. Um, spiders are showing a little bit more bearish potential than the queues um, with some probabilities of a move down into a pivot low August uh, 10th and August 9th, right around this teal line day. Teal line days tend to identify major pivots as well. So um, I, we don't know if this is going to be a pivot low or a pivot high. The probabilities are saying it's likely to be a pivot low. So we could see a, a correction coming down into um, uh, one or both of these teal line days um, before uh, a new trend emerges. Okay, so that's spiders. Let's look at diamonds. Diamonds, probably the most bearish of all three that we've seen so far, and we see um, multiple waves of moves down um, with a peak here on August 8th, right at that first teal line day. August 8th is one of those key dates that popped up in last week's video as well. How about IWM? Um, so the small caps uh, don't look quite as bearish as the others with uh, some low probabilities here of, um, of down days again, centered right around this August, August 8th teal line day. And it looks like a reasonable probability of a bit of a recovery uh, around August 17th. Okay, let's look at bonds. Bonds have been really helpful in, in helping us to interpret what's going on here. And we can see um, there's some probabilities of bond strength, but bonds prices basically went nowhere last week. Um, so the, this is the 20 year bond. This is the long bond. Um, and uh, again, interestingly, we start to see some uh, strengthening in bond prices coming up through August, August 5th. Um, so this may indicate uh, a bit of a shift to safety as uh, equity prices correct slightly. Okay, so that's TLT, let's look at the shorter end of the yield curve with the seven to 10 year. Seven to 10 year is actually looking a lot more bearish than the 20 year. So it looks like prices could come down into uh, August 11th here. They went up quite a bit this week uh, with all of the Fed news in that and the dovish words from, from Powell. Um, but it, it looks like uh, there's going to be a bit of a cor correction in uh bond prices on the shorter end of the curve coming down into August 11th. All right, so that's uh, that's something to be aware of there. And that would also align with um, some of the bearish forecasts that we see in the, in the markets. Okay, so let's take a look at gold. Gold is something that's popped up on my radar recently. Um, it's got a, uh, a few nice probabilities of up days here. Um, and uh, there's all, but there's also a pivot high. So I wouldn't, you know, hop on the bandwagon too hard yet on gold. Um, we may get a, a couple up days uh, this coming week, but um, uh, it's still definitely a, a, a short-term trade, not a long-term hold yet. Um, there looks like a very nice opportunity to hop on uh, another trade here starting around August 19th with the pivot lows that we see peaking around August 19th or August 27th to take advantage of another wave up in late August. So gold is looking interesting. I'm starting to trade that a little bit on the long side. Okay, and we'll uh, continue with a look at crypto. Um, we've got Bitcoin here. Bitcoin um, has a combination of pivot lows between um, now and August 7th and some down pressure. So we see uh, a number of probabilities of moves down 
uh, through through August 7th as well. So it looks like the recent push up um, may encounter a little bit of resistance. Um, this is not a place to be long Bitcoin, um, potentially after August 6th, August 7th, um, even though there's no up probabilities here yet, sometimes price can go up as uh, the down probabilities reduce. Okay, let's take a quick look at Ethereum. Um, Ethereum uh, has a little bit more green than Bitcoin, um, which uh, is, you know, off, since those two trade in unison, um, it's unlikely that Ethereum is going to, you know, go up significantly if Bitcoin is going down. So um, one of these forecasts is going to be wrong. So keep that in mind. Um, we also see a lot of pivot lows here through August 14th, and that's going to pull price down. So even though we see a few green bars here, um, uh, looks like there's a fair amount of gravity going to be keeping Ethereum down. Uh, and there's uh, also similar to a lot of stocks, we see a few red bars right around that uh, teal line day on August, August 6th, 7th, 8th, right around then. Okay, and we'll close things off with a look at HCL technologies in the national stock market in India. Uh, we've been looking at this for a while and um, it looks like this um, push down has completed. We've got a nice pivot low here and we're starting to see a rebound forming with some uh, pretty good probabilities of a move up starting this Friday, August 5th. So. Uh, this would be uh, a nice long trade. There's another wave of uh, another wave of moves up here, forecast to peak on September 5th. So, uh, depending on the time frame you like to trade, um, you could take profits as Friday, uh, re-enter back when these pivot lows uh, are over uh, in later in August, and uh, ride this other wave up you know, in September 5th or so. But overall, uh, a lot more uh, green up probabilities than red probabilities. This is something to trade on the long side. Okay, and that's it for me. Uh, I hope you all had a good week trading and best of luck this coming week. We will talk to you later. Thank you.